Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a video where I'm hoping to maybe become, maybe this will become like a series. So this video will include like two of my favorite things, which is like reviewing books, like dedicated reviews um, for like a single book. I love talking about any particular thing at length. Unfortunately for me, I don't have like tons of like IRL friends that like I can talk about books with, especially like at length. So this is going to be a dedicated review but I also really love like nostalgia like throwbacks and stuff like that one of my favorite feelings is like looking at a like film or a television series or a book in this case and like having that feeling of like oh yeah like I remember that book I had it until now but like I remember reading it all the time when I was younger blah 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 so that's what we're doing here and I mostly want to focus on like books that like kind of lost their social relevancy this would not be like fun for like Twilight or the Hunger Games at least for me because those always get their like resurgence every few months like the girlies on TikTok were dressing up as Bella like two months ago you know what I'm saying like that's like not like a throwback enough for me so today we are doing a dedicated review look back at Wicked Lovely by Melissa Marr. I really liked this book when I was younger. I reread it recently to do this video and it's garbage for the most part. But like if you liked it or if you still really like it, like no tea, like no shade to you. This book had a grip on me. I don't know why I liked it. No, I don't. But uh, this isn't supposed to be insulting to you if you like it. Disclaimer, I know, but I want to say it not to like hurt anyone's feelings. So before actually talking about the content of this book, I think we should look at the era, the vibes, the cover, everything about this book at first glance. It was published in 2007 I believe. That is the year that Eclipse came out so it was very much in that era. This book falls in line with the trope of young girl falls in love with like immortal teenage looking boy the era loved at the time and it still kind of does. Um, different iterations for sure but uh, yeah that was very much what was going on and this book was a part of that. This is a Faye story as well and I do think that Faye really had like its peak 2016, 2017, 2019, so on. Not to say that it hadn't been written about before, there are definitely some standout books that I can think about that had Faye other than this one like the Holly Black, what was it called, Tithe series that also had Faye. So they were definitely around before they got like super 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 popular in the 2010s but I think this is a very prime example of like some of the standouts earlier and this cover was like the epitome of like teen YA um, covers I don't know if you remember but I feel like inanimate objects were like the ish in covers like I don't know what she's holding here it looks like a flower or like some sort of like coral with like ice on it or something but like yeah like the twilight apple this thing like that was like peak teen YA like cover design at the time and I think this one's like better because the colors are really pretty like the fonts cool like there's something so like mysterious about this book like I would have definitely but obviously I, I picked it up but like I don't know how I would have been able to like resist picking up this book. I'll put up like other covers of the era like in this general area but like as you can see like compared to this masterpiece of cover design like some of the other covers were like definitely like kind of boo boo like compared to this like you would have picked this one up. So like the quick summary that like if I was just doing like a plain old wrap up where I was talking about this book I would just say that this book is about a young girl named Ashlyn. She's in high school and she's always been able to see Faye. Like she has the sight and she could see like literally any Faye. Like it's not hard for her. She doesn't have to like squint or anything. She can see them. Her entire life she's like perfected this art of like pretending they don't exist. Um, for fear of like retaliation that kind of thing until one day a fae comes up to her and like is like willingly interacting with her and like trying to talk to her and she's like oh shit like for some reason I've caught their attention and that's like where our story starts. This is a fantasy romance so some romance does eventually like kind of come about but I'll get there when I get there. Ashlyn is your typical like teen YA girl at the time like very for the most part bland. I'm sure there were definitely some well-written characters at the time but like this had the Bella effect for sure where um, you write a really like bland main character so that everyone could relate to her. Like there was nothing about her that really would ostracize a group from relating to her if that makes sense. Like you don't give her a strong personality so people will be like nah that's not something I would do. This character for the most part is just 
our main character is alive and she's in high school like it's kind of hard not to relate to her like that's her most defining aspect of her character she is emotional when her um friends get threatened like she's like pretty like basic character like like your base character in a video game before you've like done any kind of like um character customization that's ashlyn i wish i could say more about her as a main character but i can't i do have issues with her choices but i'll get there when i get there she has the sight her grandmother also has the sight so she's kind of paranoid about that but for the most part like that's her entire like existence that's pretty much who she is she i mentioned that she um gets approached by a fae and this fae is really trying to get with her he's like romantically interested in her and he's like supposed to be super beautiful and like handsome and kind um but unfortunately for him and unfortunately for us we have to suffer through ashlyn's crush on this human guy named seth so this book does have a love triangle a staple of the era of the genre of the age range there is a love triangle between the fae that approaches Ashlyn and then this guy who she's kind of had a crush on for a hot minute now. Unfortunately for us we have to endure this love triangle. I by nature I'm not like against love triangles though they don't often are really well done. So there's a love triangle and it sucks because Seth's not that great of a character. Let me describe Seth in the most unappealing way I can which is not that hard because he's kind of a shitty character in my opinion i think he has to be like at least 21 years old um there's a scene in this book where ashlyn opens up his fridge and finds a microbrew that he has i don't think he would have stolen it so i think he has to be at least 21 years old to buy some beer well he has to be 21 years old to like buy beer in this country but it's not inferred that he like stole it or anything maybe someone gave it to him but i think he's at least 21 he does go to college so why is this 21 year old slumming it with like 16 year old girls i don't know not that the fake guy gets a pass either he's like really old as well he looks 17 but like he doesn't get a pass i'll tear him a new asshole when i can but this guy is like 21 years old you're human you should know better but he's slumming it with like 16 year olds that's kind of weird he's like described as like really skinny and like has like facial piercings and like tattoos and like i don't know if this is what the author was intending probably not because he's not he wasn't popular at the time but like i was thinking machine gun kelly which i personally don't find attractive but that's who I had in my mind when uh, reading this book. That's kind of what Seth looks like in my head. And that's annoying because Machine Gun Kelly is like super cringy. But anyways, he's described as like reading everything. Everything from like Chaucer to Nietzsche and all that kind of stuff. Like, like he seems pretty insufferable. He's like, I get like that faux deep 20 year old like hipster vibes from him. Like I feel like he's unironically the guy who's like I love Fight Club and like Cannibal Holocaust. Like that's like his vibe to me and you can't argue with that because that's my interpretation. I don't like him at all really. The only I guess redeeming thing is that he really cares about Ashton's safety which like um so do her friends so like you don't get br like brownie points for that. And he also kind of has a reputation for sleeping around whether or not he does or doesn't like that's just his reputation and then let's talk about the fey his name is keenan and he's actually the summer king which wild i know why does summer king want to hook up with a 16 year old human girl i don't know you would think that by being the king of an immortal group of fey that you'd be like interesting like something interesting to talk about he doesn't he's boring too like his main flaw is just he is boring like at least machine gun kelly look alike is insufferable and like i can hate on him but like i have no opinions about keenan other than he's kind of creepy and stalkery but that was like the mo for most of these like immortal like love interests that we saw in these like middle grade or excuse me teen romance books like stalkerish romance tendencies but like other than that like he's boring like i would much rather ashlyn just like not hook up with anyone but she's gonna choose someone at the end and it's not someone you might think most characters are pretty insufferable our like main villain our antagonist her name is Beira, and she's actually keenan the summer king's like mother um she's the winter queen and she's like your stereotypical like mustache twirly villain which would be like fun and campy but i don't think that's the author's intention to like have a campy book Beira's evil and like all that but like i don't get why like it's very like one note evil villain and i don't 
like that. At one point, she's described to be looking like a 1950s housewife. Like when she chooses like a human appearance, like that's what she chooses, which screams camp. But I don't think that's the author's intention. And then we also have another girl. Um, her name is Donya or Donia, and she's a winter girl. So she's kind of like subject to the winter queen. Um, I'll get to her like purpose later on in the story. But she kind of also has a personality. Um, her personality is that she's in love with Keenan, but she can't be with him because um, she's not the chosen one um, for him. And that's like really boring to read about how someone's like so madly in love with like a wet noodle. Like I, I can't sympathize with you girl like you can do better like he's boring everything about these characters are insufferable give me something else to work with so let's talk about the plot of the story you would think it'd be just a simple like oh this girl meets a fey guy and they kind of start like falling in love with each other and like that's it it becomes convoluted for a reason that it didn't need to become convoluted for. and that is that keenan's looking for a summer queen and for some reason it has to be human like he can't find another fae to do it for him like it it the summer queen must be human like he's been looking for her for 900 years just looking for her not that he's been alive for 900 years he's just been looking for her for 900 years and obviously he's like not doing a good job but in order to not only find her she has to like pass a test and this test is that she has to um overcome the winter queens keenan's mom's chill and that that essentially is like he she has to pick up like a scepter or like the winter queen scepter and like prove that like the winter doesn't affect her like she's the true summer queen like she can fight off winter's chill that's all fun and games fine whatever there are rules that are applied to this that make no sense whatsoever and there are also these weird consequences that i don't get so the minute that keenan chooses a mortal girl that he thinks might be the summer queen she's immediately like starting to turn into a fae how this process starts where he just decides like she might be my summer queen so you, you will start turning into a fae i don't know how that goes once he's decided like this girl might be my summer queen she has one of three choices she either does not risk becoming summer queen for whatever reason doesn't want to be the summer queen and so she becomes a summer girl summer girls are essentially like his harem which i don't know like romantic um like the romantic vibes of Faye. like i don't know if they have open relationships by nature which is fine i'm not like opposed to that but i don't think ashlyn is like okay with that and like keenan never tells her that like he has a harem of women like at his beck and call for whatever reason and they're like described as these like <laughs> like airheaded like girlies that just like want the king's attention but didn't want to risk becoming the summer queen okay that's option number one option number two is that she risks becoming the summer queen by facing winter's chill but if she fails that test she becomes a winter girl winter girls are essentially like the girls that flopped at the challenge like they did not they did not have what it takes to become a summer queen so they are not a winter girl and it's like a punishment however there's absolutely no reason to like there's no wrong thing about becoming a winter girl like the only bad thing is that you are not the chosen one which sucks but like it's not like you're sick or anything it's not like you um you're still a fae you know what i'm saying like you're still mortal you're so fae you're just part of this court instead of that court like there's nothing wrong with being a, like there's no like like deadly consequences to being a winter girl you just failed you don't die or anything you just you're now part of the winter court which sucks but like it's one or it doesn't really matter or if you do risk becoming the summer queen and you do pass the test then you pass the test and that's great like you're now the queen congratulations so ashlyn has absolutely like no choices whatsoever like she's gonna be a fae whether she wants to or not no like wasn't asked like keenan just decided for her like you're gonna be fae now girl like good luck however there are also rules applied to this the winter girl the girls who flopped um there's like one main one and then there's other ones but the main one is the most recent girl who didn't pass the test and her job is to like prevent other girls from trying to um from accepting this challenge if that makes sense so like Danya is our most recent winter girl or like head winter girl i suppose um and she's trying to prevent other girls from like taking the 
the test that she took which makes no sense because she hates her position her position is supposed to be like bad like everyone's like oh no it's a current winter girl like that sucks for her like it's like a stigma i suppose wouldn't you want to encourage other ones other people to take your place so you don't have the stigma anymore but she has to like like try to convince these girls not to take take the test which makes no sense logically why would you why wouldn't you want someone else to take your spot if it was like that bad and i forgot to mention that the reason why keenan's looking for a queen is because he has like no or his powers have been capped by his mother why his mother capped his powers other than maybe she's power hungry i don't know i guess that's the main reason it's kind of inferred that like winter is gonna like over come the planet somehow and like um it's gonna be like super like bad for the humans but like in this book there's like no sense of urgency whatsoever like the humans are like we're cool like we're fine like there's nothing wrong like everyone's like oh my god like Beira the winter queen she's like so evil like she's like wintry cold bitch or whatever and like the humans could not care less like they don't even notice anything's going on so like this whole like Beira's like power hungry like i don't see it like there's no threat whatsoever so like i mean it sucks for keenan that his powers got capped by his mother i don't know why like like it sucks for him but like it really in the grand scheme of things it affects no one whatsoever other than keenan so that's essentially why keenan wants a queen just so he can be like a, a, a true king i suppose it does i guess affect the fae of the summer court since they're like not as powerful as other fae because their king is like limited in his power i guess i'm trying to make, make logic where there was none in this book i'm just like trying to reason through it with y'all so Beira is not allowed to interfere with the summer king finding a queen but she thinks it's okay for others to interfere on her behalf i don't know how that logic makes sense either this would have been just much easier if it was like about a girl who falls in love with a fae and the fae falls in love with her again like like that would have been much simpler and like more streamlined but we threw in this weird ass contest that makes no sense it's also like very heavily like told to us that like Beira killed her husband keenan's father for what reason i don't know it, we were just told like she killed her husband okay doesn't affect the story whatsoever really okay so that's enough about that convoluted plot um the romance was garbage let's talk about seth and ashlyn i already dislike seth like as a uh, essence as a human being as a person like i don't like him so like any romantic moments with him was just so infuriating our main character ashlyn's like in love with him why i don't get it i hate this trope happened a lot i feel in this era where like a girl was stuck between like her human crush and like the immortal being that like is also into her like it's really obvious what the choice should be the immortal as boring as keenan is i probably still would have like no questions asked chosen him because at least that would be entertaining to be like a fae in my opinion mm -hmm. and it's also like really infuriating because almost like every single time and in this book as well our main character ashlyn has been in love with this guy for a long time and he only just kind of started validating her feelings maybe like two minutes ago ashlyn has been in love with seth for like ever it seems months probably but i'm gonna say forever for like dramatic purposes um she's been in love with this guy forever and he's only really started to like really like put himself out there for her her reasoning was like i never wanted to like express my feelings for him because he has a reputation of being like a player and like having one night stands and she doesn't want that which i understand a 16 year old girl like having those reservations i too have those re like reservations but like this guy's 21 years old like he could be honest like you're 21 years old be honest with this girl and be like i like you or i don't like you like i'm 21 years old why i'm with a 16 year old girl i don't know but like why is he playing the high school game there's a whole chunk of like i like him but like i think he only has one night stand so i'm never gonna tell him my feelings and it's so frustrating to read like just tell you tell him your feelings girl because he's obviously like has the same like emotional maturity as you a 16 year old girl and he's not 16 he's 21 at least and it's just like not fun to read like a girl being so caught up with this guy who's only just starting to acknowledge her like or reciprocate her feelings if a girl told me that in real life how she's like not sure about this relationship i like i my advice to girls all the time is like just break up with him like i'm pretty bad about like asking about like relationship advice like my advice is always just like break up with them so i'm not like not a good judge but like i would have just said 
break up with the human, get with the fairy. That sounds way cooler, in my opinion. I don't like Seth, but it's not like Keenan's that much better. He's boring. Um, he has very much the Edward Stalker vibes of following her around when she thinks she doesn't see him. I guess choosing her to become the new summer queen which immediately starts turning her into a fae even though she didn't ask for that so that sucks all her friends and family are gonna die at some point and she's gonna be immortal so bummer for you i don't know why anyone would be interested in him as like an individual because like he has nothing going for him other than the fact that he can give you immortality like that's cool also he like low-key kind of roofies her with like fae booze at some point so none of the romances are like ever compelling they're both pretty doo-doo and then we get to the ending shitty romance shitty characters shitty weird convoluted plot even when i was younger and for some reason i really like this book i could still acknowledge that the ending was still kind of garbage even at my young precious 12 13 year old self um the ending is again i don't care about spoiling this book is that ashlyn does become summer queen like surprise surprise she's a chosen one but she chooses to stay with Seth and Keenan goes back to Danya, the winter girl who like last flopped the test and is like I'm I'm in love with you like I've always been in love with you which seems so disingenuous because we see the entire book he's like in love with Ashlyn and he's like she's the chosen one like I adore her she's like gorgeous or whatever. But then at the end you're like, no Donya, you're the one for me. And it's like, bro, like you have a harem of women. You have this human girl that you've been like stringing around. And then now you go back to the girl who like, last flopped the, the test. And you're telling her she, like she's the woman that you really love. Like I don't get it. Like you're garbage. Anyways, and then she's like, despite the fact that I'm now summer queen, I still want to finish high school and go to college girl i mean i like going to college but like i'm a boring person who had like nothing better to do like you're literally like a fake queen why 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 do you want to even finish high school like high school like sucks ass hi so i forgot to say this so i'm editing right now um this video but i wanted to mention because it, bl it like blew my mind i forgot to mention it in the video ashlyn's mother passes away before the book even starts i believe she passes away in childbirth or when ashlyn was really young and it's never really talked about that much because ashlyn seems pretty well adjusted for a girl who lost her mother her father's never really been brought up in the book either so that's all well and dandy um however at some point towards the end of the book we find out that keenan also thought that Ashton's mother could have been a summer queen so he had the hots for her as well why we were told this I have no idea it's incredibly weird to be told that this guy who's into you was also kind of into your mother why she wasn't slowly turning into a fate like Ashton was I don't know um but I thought I'd mention it because that was also kind of a hot mess of a plot point that we were given it affected the story in no way whatsoever like yeah i just thought i'd throw that in there because it was wild when i was told so that's the story of wicked lovely i don't know if you remember it as vividly as i just described it but it was not the vibe it was not the moment anymore it was lovely when it came out pun intended in 2007 but not so much anymore i probably shouldn't continue on with the series but like the other covers for some reason still got me i have ink exchange Maybe I'll read this later on um, in a handful of years and see what's the tea with that one. I didn't really describe the writing because that's not my strong suit in terms of like reviewing. I'm not super picky with writing. It's not hard to read at all but like this author does do that thing that a lot of teen authors do and it's like those really weird descriptions of like she looked like dangerous and lightning all wrapped into one whatever the fuck that means like those kinds of weird descriptions i will say though that the author does describe like the fae very well kind of gruesome and stuff so if you like a more gruesome take on the fae this is kind of up that alley though it's not like super violent or anything like that so yeah that's my throwback into wicked lovely i hope you enjoyed this video you know i didn't like the book but i did enjoy my experience and reading it and like tabbing 
and writing notes on it and all that kind of stuff I do think that's still like fun for me though I didn't like enjoy the book reading it again I do enjoy like just talking at length about books even if it's something that I dislike um, so I hope you enjoyed the video let me know if there are other books that you think might fit this category let me know what you think of Wicked Lovely when you read it originally if you reread it what your thoughts are about it in general so yeah feel free to like comment or subscribe or do neither it's all cool with me I'll link all my socials down below as well as some far more important links by the way if you heard my dog the entire time I'm so sorry he's being um, way more rambunctious than usual so 